These are your instructions. As usual, just follow the PowerPoint. Make sure the sound is turned up on your device so you can hear the narration. Your instructions are in yellow boxes on the relevant slides. Remember, if a slide asks for homework, don't forget to send it in via Show My Homework. And if a slide asks for Educate to be completed, don't forget to do it by the date given on the slide. This PowerPoint and the accompanying video cover two lessons worth of work, all related to Hooke's Law. Our objectives are to investigate the link between force and extension for a spring and to produce a graph to illustrate the relationship between force and extension. To start the lesson, we're going to review the homework that was due in last Friday. Pause the video here and read the question to remind yourself. Don't be put off by the large amount of writing. Let's do the question one part at a time. So part A, with one monkey on the spring, the total length is 49 centimetres. With three monkeys on the spring, the total length is 67 centimetres. How long will the spring be when two monkeys are hung from it? So to start with, we know with one monkey, the length is 49 centimetres, and with three monkeys, the length is 67 centimetres. Now what that's saying to us is that two monkeys are making the spring 67 minus 49 equals 18 centimetres longer. So two monkeys are making it 18 centimetres longer, or each monkey is making the spring 9 centimetres longer. Bearing that in mind, if you go back to the beginning, with one monkey, the spring is 49 centimetres, and we know that 9 centimetres of that is due to the extension caused by one monkey. So if we take that 9 centimetres away as if there wasn't a monkey, then the original length of the spring must have been 49 minus 9 equals 40 centimetres long. So now we know the original length of the spring and the extension caused by putting each individual monkey on the spring. So this means with two monkeys, the spring must be the original length, 40 centimetres, plus the extension caused by two monkeys, which is nine centimetres each, 18 centimetres in total. So with two monkeys, the length is the 40 plus the 18 equals 58 centimetres. So part B, what is the value of the spring constant K for the spring? Well, now we know that with one monkey on the spring, the extension is nine centimetres. So let's use that information. Each monkey has a mass of 900 grams or 0.9 kilograms. Remember, that's a mass, not a force. To, to find out what the force is, you need to use your equation W equals mg, because the force in this case is a weight caused by gravity. So each monkey is exerting W equals mg. The mass is 0.9 kilograms, and we'll take G as being 10. So that is each monkey is exerting a force of nine newtons. So now you know the force is nine newtons and the extension is 0.09 meters, nine centimeters. Using that information and our spring equation, F equals KE, rearrange that equation to give you K equals F divided by E. Substitute in your figures, K equals nine divided by 0.09 gives you the spring constant of 100 newtons per meter. Part C, how long will the spring be with no monkeys on it? Well, as part doing question part A, we worked out that with one monkey, the spring is 49 centimeters long and nine centimeters of that is due to the extension caused by the monkey. So without any monkeys, the spring must be 40 centimeters long. Part D, the elastic limit of the spring is reached when a force of 50 newtons is applied to it. How long will the spring be when it reaches its elastic limit? So remember, elastic limit is just another way of saying the limit of proportionality. It's that point beyond which the spring is no longer going to return to its original length. It has, in effect, been ruined at that point. So let's have a look. We know from the question, the parts that we've done already, that the spring constant K is 100. And in this case, they're saying the force is 50 Newtons. If we put in our equation, F equals KE, 
and then we rearrange it to give us e equals f divided by k. Substitute in your figures, and it gives you e equals 0.5 meters. Now, at this point, you have to be careful because what you've worked out is the extension when a load of 50 newtons is applied. You haven't worked out the total length of the spring. To work out the total length of the spring, you need the extension plus the original length. And if you remember from the earlier part of the question, the original length was 40 centimetres. So the total length now is the 40 plus the 50, which is 90 centimetres or 0.9 metres if you're working in metres. So for the next two lessons, we're going to be looking at a required practical around Hooke's law, all about force and extension on a spring. Can you start by pausing the video here and watching this clip for me on YouTube? Now, obviously, we're not in a position where we can do the practical ourselves. So we're going to use our online e-learning platform called Focus. So go to the website. The address is given here. And if you're asked to log in, the details are on the screen now. Once you're logged in, click on Physics Required Practicals. Click on AQA, which is our exam board. Click on Force and Extension, which is the practical we're going to be doing. And to record your results, you're going to need two tables like the ones shown in the next slide. Follow the instructions on the focus screen to carry out the practical. You are going to do two springs, A and B, and you're going to record the extension for a range of forces from 0 to 10 newtons. Record the results in your books, in your tables. Now this is a required practical, so we need to know all aspects of it. In your books, write the following titles and add all of the detail, just as if you were filling out a placemat at school. Later on, we can move the information onto your placemats. One, hypothesis. What do you think will happen as you add weight to the spring and why? Two, variables. What are your variables? Independent, dependent and control. Three, risks. What are the possible risks? Four, your method. How did you do the experiment? You only need to put in bullet points. Five, diagram. You use focus e-learning or there is a quick picture on slide seven as well. Six, results. This is the data in your two tables. Conclusion, number seven. What do our results tell us? Using the results that you've got in your tables, plot two graphs. You can put them both on the same piece of paper for spring A and spring B. This slide will help you with your method and your diagram. This slide will help you come to a conclusion. Your final task is to send me some evidence of the work that you've completed in the last two lessons. So send me photos of the work in your books and also of your two graphs to Mr. Rahman via Show My Homework by this Friday. Thank you.